these are the only two Fantastic Beasts I need. Right. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to Drinks in a Movie. Chris Hamker back with you. Today we'll be talking about the new film from the Harry Potter universe, Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. But first, let's start with the drink, of course. The drink I'm going to be making is called the Phoenix, because it's a fantastic beast. Why not? So, the Phoenix uh, consists of two parts gin, one and a half parts grapefruit juice, half part vermouth, half part simple syrup, uh, fresh, well, uh, ground black pepper, and 10 uh, rosemary sprigs. So, I don't know, we'll see, let's try it out. All right, so two parts gin, we'll start with that. One, two, And then one and a half parts grapefruit juice. One and a half. And then a half part simple syrup. A half part vermouth. Or three fourths. It's all just, uh, it's all just chemistry. Uh, <laughs> Freshly ground black pepper and 10 rosemary sprigs. One, two, three, ten. Okay. Put it into a shaker with ice and shake the bastard up. And then pour into a martini glass. All right, let's see how this baby tastes. Cheers, here's to Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them is directed by David Yates and written by J.K. Rowling and stars Eddie Redmayne as Newt Scamander, an expert on magical creatures and goes around the world, well, finding them. Apparently he already knows where to find them. Um, now this makes for the second most famous newt in Hollywood. And yes, the creatures mostly get loose in New York. Mostly. Anyway, Newt brings his case full of creatures to New York. A couple of them get loose and hilarity ensues, I guess. Now let's start with what I did like about the movie, because unfortunately there's a lot I didn't like. Uh, J.K. Rowling, once again, is brilliant at creating this world that, uh, that, that we watch here on screen. I mean, it, it is done brilliantly once again, and it is gr great and nice expanse of the world we already know. Even though it's set, you know, years before, 1926, before all the Harry Potter uh, uh, films and books. I mean, I really did like the world the filmmakers put forth here. I really felt like the 1920s New York was a little cartoony, but still fun and pretty immersive and, and you know, and enjoyable to watch. Now, I love the designs of the beasts, and especially the case once they go inside it, where they're kept. I mean, it was really imaginative and creative, and, and stuff I really enjoyed about the movie. I just wish the whole thing was like this. The acting is also very good in this movie. Eddie Redmayne made some very inter interesting choices that I really appreciate, and I, I thought were very good. I mean, his character really seemed like somebody that spends most of his time with animals and not interacting with humans. He was very awkward at times, and rightfully so. Dan Fogler, who is usually kind of a very broad comedic actor, is not over the top at all, and his acting and story was actually kind of surprisingly touching and something I didn't expect. Um, also, this drink is surprisingly good. It has a little peppery bite to it because of the pepper. Anyway, uh, one other thing, uh, Ron Perlman has this neat little cameo in it, and it's something you might miss, but 
the character that uh, that he plays, you'll you'll be thinking to yourself, do I know this guy? Do I know this guy? And he's always fun to watch. I mean, I love Ron Perlman. Uh, Colin Farrell's okay in this. He has one nice moment, but otherwise he's kind of one note and, uh, you know, not very dynamic. Okay, so now I got to talk about some of the problems I had with this movie. This movie is essentially two movies. One where's Newt going around catching Fantastic Beats, Beasts beasts and it's a lot of fun and really creative stuff to watch and the other is is all this intrigue within the american ministry of magic or the makuza the uh magical congress of the united states of america i like makuza i think it's a nice little acronym um but anyway, this kind of goes along with my whole, with my second problem in the movie is that it is tonally all over the place. And what I mean by that is there'll be a serious, sad, and unnerving moment, and then it cuts directly to the next scene that is this kind of jovial, slapstick, uh, beast-catching little scene that's a lot of fun and really funny. And th the problem with that is it doesn't give the audience time to take in what just happened. And the problem with that is, is that if you do that, it cheapens these sad, serious moments that I'm assuming the filmmakers want, want to, want to uh, have, have have it hold some weight and if you just gloss over like that it, it, it loses all the weight and doesn't give the audience a chance to really process all of this. I just think it's really hard to skirt that line and try to do it both ways and really you can't have it both ways. I'm not sure who this movie is for and that's my problem with it. The, the fun beast catching moments could be for uh, the entire family, like kids six and up, um, but then the other bits that I think are very heavy and, and serious and sad and unnerving um, could scare kids. I mean, I, I, I would say any kids from like 10 or 11 and up uh, would be able to maybe handle this stuff. Now, one of the other problems with this, this movie is that uh, the, the plot is all over the place. I mean, it has some great concepts in it, but I, I just wish that this movie was just about uh, Eddie Redmayne's character, Newt, going around and, and catching all these fantastic creatures, just like the title says. But it's not. They threw in all these other things with the ministry and with these secret characters and stuff to try to set up further movies, and that's always a bad idea, Hollywood. It's always a bad idea. And I'm looking at you, Age of Ultron. Marvel's not immune to this stuff. Uh, they just shouldn't do it at all. They should focus on one thing, and maybe put a few little Easter eggs in there, but they, they, they tried to do both things at once and it, and it just didn't work for this movie at all. That last problem I'll talk about, and it's really short, is that this movie doesn't stand on its own as its own entity. Uh, meaning that if you don't have background knowledge of the Harry Potter wizarding world, then you might not know what the hell is going on. There's a lot of stuff they throw at you at the very beginning in this strange like prologue of the newspapers that were cool during Harry Potter, but they just give you little glimpses of what you're going to see later this is this is kind of just trying to to narrate a little exposition for you without actually doing that and it's and it didn't it, it just it didn't work look all in all this movie is actually a little disappointing i suppose because the harry potter series was very well made there's only a couple of movies in there that um are, are subpar, but they're still really solid. Uh, this movie was kind of a mess narratively, um, and it's ultimately forgettable, unfortunately. I just, uh, I, I, I wanted it to be better than it was. And through the magic of television, I have another, this is actually unexpectedly good. You should try it. Look, Here's my rating. I'm going to give this movie a two drinks out of five. I wanted it to be better. Uh, I think it had some great concepts in it, but just uh, fell flat for me. Uh, thanks, everybody, for joining me. Um, I hope you enjoyed this. If you like this, please like, share, subscribe down here at the bottom. Uh, let me know what your favorite Harry Potter movie is. I think mine is The Order of the Phoenix. It's a really good one. Um, anyway, cheers, everybody. Have a drink on me. Thank you so much for joining me.